Hello and welcome to another edition of Our Digital Future. This innovative series of online new style programs covers issues and promotes discussion around key topics important to your industry. Our Digital Future is proudly brought to you by the Australian Information Industry Association in partnership with ASN Media. Our four episodes bring you the latest innovations, discuss industry challenges and solutions, and showcase best practices from across the technology industry. Those who play a vital role in charting Australia's digital future, the politicians, business leaders, and the association itself will share their insights with us. In this episode, we look at privacy, security, and transparency in the ICT industry. Security and trust have become major issues worldwide that raise serious challenges. Our program begins with AIIA CEO Ron Gauchi and Chair Rob Hillard discussing these global issues that affect individuals, companies and governments. I think the greatest challenge is ourselves. We need to learn to adapt and adopt very quickly. As the world changes and the world becomes more globally competitive and it is adopting technology at a rapid rate, it's for us to keep pace. And I think the challenges are for us to understand what that pace needs to be, what the investment needs to be, and how we build capacity and capability to meet that challenge. I'm a technology optimist. I love the fact that I'm able to enable um, and streamline so many parts of my life with technology. But I'm also a technology realist, and I know that the digital breadcrumbs that we're leaving have all sorts of consequences. We are going to have to be extremely nimble, and innovative to make sure that not only that we find the right balance, but we also manage to navigate between regulation and using technology to solve the problems that technology can create. Yes, it's important to have a nation that is secure, but we also need to respect uh, the issues of privacy and, and the rights of the individual. I believe that the work currently being done in our country to understand the ethics and, and the requirements of that is creating good discussion and I think it's important that we continue to have the discussion and get that balance right and the AAA plays a significant part in that role. Australian organisations spent $1.36 billion on cloud infrastructure as a service last year and that spending is likely to more than double in the next five years. As the volume of cloud data increases, so does the need for ensuring its security and protection. Reporter Yana Black investigates how Australian-owned and managed service AU Cloud is competing head-to-head -head with its global competitors in this vital area. For AU Cloud, protecting the data of Australian citizens onshore is the core of their business. Sovereign support to protect local industry is just what it has been searching for as privacy and security concerns have grown. We've been looking for over 12 months as part of that, just the, the DEHS project, so the Defence Health project, um, and we'd actually been embarking on a modernisation program for nearly two years before that to allow us to move on to some sovereign infrastructure. DXC is an international technology company working in fields like financial services, insurance, the public sector and the defence market. So, for instance, the platform we were using is the Defence Health platform, and it's got all of the medical record for the serving defence people. And so for us it became important around how do we actually have that onshore in Australia with only Australian citizens being able to view it. And then the security and privacy concerns around who was allowed to see that data was actually paramount in our mind. This is the infrastructure that supports cloud-based storage right here in Australia. AU Cloud is a sovereign provider of infrastructure as a service. Uh, infrastructure as a service enables customers, governments to actually right-size their use of computer storage to align to what they actually need uh, and only pay for what they use. Competing with global companies like Microsoft and AWS, Phil says they're on a level playing field. It means that the local teams are challenged to have any influence on the global mission. It means that we can make decisions in a more agile way, we're more adaptable to our local customers and we're able to align what we do to the local Australian government best practices. 
With sovereignty the name of the game, government departments and businesses must be confident everything stays right here in Australia. In fact, it's crucial now and into the future. So we have very much an approach of um, you know, train like you fight. And so cybersecurity operations is very much a competitive landscape, a competitive environment. You have the hackers and the defenders. And so having that combat experience uh, within cyberspace and understanding how cyber operations and your job works within the context of a business. Fifth Domain provides software as a service platforms to organisations and the education sector to train in cybersecurity operations. Having a sovereign supply chain to ensure that the economy uh, and society can sustain itself and maintain operations in the event of some sort of uh, global disruption is essential. And that's why we really value the relationship we have with AU Cloud because it then strengthens our brand and our mission to be able to provide these sovereign services to Australia. Services that are becoming ever more popular. And the reason it's growing so fast is quite simply that the old model of on-premise is moving to cloud, new applications are being written to cloud, and just the vast, vast amount of data that's created every year uh, is just growing exponentially. The public is increasingly demanding transparency when it comes to cyber matters. That's according to the New South Wales Minister for Digital, Victor Dominello. Minister Dominello says that public trust in digital infrastructure is absolutely vital. Well, the challenges around digital is trust, particularly with government service delivery. And trust for me is built on five pillars, privacy, security, transparency, ethics and inclusion. We put people on the moon 50 odd years ago, so we can do pretty much anything with digital these days and technology. But if you do not have trust, then it's one step forward and 10 steps back. So it's just so vital. In security, we are without question the uh, capital of the Southern Hemisphere when it comes to cyber. We're putting $240 million of the $1.6 billion in the Digital Reset Fund towards cyber. And of the extra $500 million, well, we've got another $75 million just on cyber. Cyber security is like driving a car without a seatbelt. It won't be allowed in the future, you must have cyber back then. And transparency, just look at what we've done recently with Service New South Wales. There's, there were some issues in relation to grant funding for small businesses. So what we've done, we've published our metrics on the service site. So people can see you know, every day exactly how we're tracking. Now, you know, you can read it in, in the tabloids or watch it on the news, or better still, just look for yourself because it's important that we have the transparency in place. Due to the alarming jump in international hacking incidents, governments worldwide are on alert and re-examining the security of their national data. And the critical information upon which the world relies is increasingly being managed by a tough new breed of data centre. Dean Alan Craig has this report on CDC data centres. Data security has never been more important. Digital intrusions by international cyber criminals have been widely reported. So how safe is our national data? It's an issue that is central to the design and operation of one of the world's highest security data centres, CDC. It's very important, obviously, with the, the types of data uh, and the volume of data that you know, we, um, we, we host here at CDC, uh, that only the right people at the right time can access any of that data for the right and correct purposes. And there's a lot of significant operational procedures that are in place to ensure that that's the case. Knowing where your data is stored and exactly who is managing and securing it is critical to its safekeeping. It's what's become known as data sovereignty. CDC data partner SliceTech says they need secure and stable access for their clients' data 24-7 and say data sovereignty has become a major concern for all of their clients. Australian data is exactly that. It's Australian data. It's collected for utilisation on our behalf to our benefit and it's really important that we maintain that sovereignty. It's incredibly difficult to ensure that that sovereignty is understood and maintained when it's offshore. And keeping it within Australia, within an Australian data centre, 
is key for the basis of that sovereignty to be established and maintained. I think the world's changed, particularly since the pandemic, but even before the pandemic, there was kind of increasing concerns around having sovereign capability and the hosting of important data within Australia. The CDC data centres were originally established for government to replace ageing servers housed in office basements. But CDC now serve many customers, including national critical infrastructure, such as public transport, defence and financial institutions. The data centres are designed to ensure their clients can be hosted in their growth phase and not forced into an expensive migration to another facility. The assurance, a number of level layers of assurance, the, the physical security, the resilience, the performance, but then also the protections around change. We protect them from having to evolve their data centre to suit the changing IT. The world's leading data centres aim for fully sustainable operations. CDC data centres, like the ones we visited in Canberra, are using 100% renewable energy. Importantly, CDC has made a conscious decision to invest significant capital to ensure that all their data centres are able to cool their service without wasting any precious water. I really enjoy telling our customers about the sustainability characteristics of our facilities. Uh, I'm a bit of a water nerd myself, so being able to tell them where they probably used hundreds of thousands of litres of water every day or every week in a year, they actually don't consume any in our facility. The Australian Government has developed a range of data centre accreditation levels, the highest being Certified Strategic. It's a ranking CDC now has for all of its nine data centres. Key to this level of security and guaranteed 24-7 remote access is the architecture offered with four independent backup power systems, full data backup and high level physical security. Critical infrastructure is all tier four, um, so completely fault tolerant. Um, if one entire feed fails, there's a complete another backup to, to support that. So, it helps us all sleep at night. Um, we know that the system will always be on because that's what we need to deliver to, custom, to our customers. Given the importance of these issues, we asked business leaders to share their thoughts on how Australia is positioned when it comes to security and transparency. In a digital world, there are obviously many uh, challenges. One of those challenges is about how do we make sure that people are confident, that their data is safe, that the way in which they operate is not going to be compromised by third parties. The issue is we're seeing you know, the, the, the front page of normal media now talking about ransomware. You've got organisations, um, you know, most recently a pipeline in the US, that, that have got serious implications uh, for the day-to-day -day activity of all citizens. Um, you see ransomware increase, lots of debate about that at the moment as to what you could or should do as a company director. Um, and that's all about data security. It's not just the customer data, it's the metadata, the monitoring data, the analytics data, what's happening to that as it transitions around the country, around the world. And, and you've got to get it right. You've got to get the consent model right with privacy as well. Security is very much just a, a specialization from a technology point of view. Um, and it's, you know, if you look where we sit in relation to other countries geographically, then cybersecurity is absolutely critical. Again, it comes back to having enough te technology literate individuals in order to be able to, you know, you know, essentially you need an army of cybersecurity specialists. So we need to grow that army. What it requires absolutely is for every one of us is to have a very clear view as to what it is we need to do from a digital side to protect the way in which we operate. It's about technology, it's about processes, and it's about people who are thinking that way in everything that they do. So it's a combination of all of those things. And I think if we can do that, then we will be able to operate safely within the, the, the digital world within which we currently operate. Other sector leaders also spoke of the important role of the AIIA in helping support Australia's digital journey. Now, the AIIA actually plays a really important role um, because um, all wisdom and knowledge and whatnot doesn't just exist you know, within uh, the halls of power. Um, that 
there's a constant education process that uh, as the peak industry body representing uh, the vast majority of you know, ICT organisations in Australia, um, the AAA needs to um, collaborate and support you know, the government in, um, in their policy development and policy settings. It's an advocate for law change, you know, for, for removing or changing laws that really are built for uh, you know, the past. You know? So we, we really need to, anything that's now not digitally native in a sense is always going to be at a disadvantage. So we really need to look carefully at the laws we have, but conversely we need to still do that safely. So things like AI and ethics in AI, so the AWA is, is both trying to unlock productivity, but it's also looking to make sure that comes with the right set of social outcomes. It also needs to act as a, a conduit to um, sort of corral all the various you know, thinking of, of the best and brightest minds in the ICT industry um, and sort of bring that, those, those great ideas, um, not only to you know, government in terms of policy development, uh, but also um, to, to improve collaboration and uh, across industry uh, so that uh, everyone gets fitter and stronger and, and better um, and, uh, and it's not just a, you know, a competitive environment um, all the time. And that wraps up this episode of Our Digital Future. Our other episodes will look further into future industry and innovation and cover the crucial area of digital skills and training. We very much look forward to you joining us again. But for now, I'm Joe Pearson. It's goodbye from the team and goodbye from me. Thank you.